in just a second. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Next, we have Cloaked Therapeutics, LLC. It's a private biopharmaceutical company registered in Delaware and formed in 2014 to commercially develop under exclusive license proprietary tumor select technology discovered by Veiled Therapeutics. Happy to welcome President and CEO Lisa McChesney Harris. Nice to see you. Welcome to the conference today, Lisa. Thank you very much. All right, go through the slides. The floor is yours and just call me back when you're ready for questions. Okay, wonderful. So um, we are a small biopharmaceutical company um, developing a technology uh, in which um, we have worked um, quite some, some period of time. And I just kind of wanted to, to walk you through exactly the approach uh, that has uh, been entailed to develop uh, this technology. Um, so our mission is really to develop a proprietary pseudo LDL technology uh, that could be targeted directly and selectively to tumors. Uh, and the novelty of this is that the uh, sum of the individual parts is greater uh, when you add everything together, the efficacy, what, what we found is, is, is um, the collective uh, effect uh, works very well. Um, we wanted to transform uh, cancer treatment by providing uh, a low lower toxicity uh, system and by also uh, creating and utilizing bodily uh, biological pathways to help us in the delivery of this system. So on this slide, we kind of go through the problem. Uh, there is often systemic toxicity associated with cancer chemotherapy uh, because uh, everything most drugs are delivered to the entire system and are less selective. Um, again, alluding to the severe uh, side effect profiles, the loss of hair, the neuropathy, things that uh, occur when people encounter and partake of chemotherapy. Um, and we really felt there was a huge unmet need and a targeted solution was urgently needed to kind of uh, bypass systemic exposure and target uh, tumor cells. Um, so the pathway that was uh, designed is a targeted drug delivery system and tumor select exploits cancer cells and we use unique biology to selectively deliver that chemotherapy while avoiding and sparing healthy tissues. We camouflaged and transport, um, thus the cloaked uh, nomenclature of our business. Uh, we utilize natural metabolic pathways and we evade normal cellular defenses uh, and, and thus the chemotherapeutic can accumulate within the tumors. The uh, tumor microenvironment is leveraged to activate the drug release, um, ensuring precision activation. And then finally, that chemotherapeutic payload um, is delivered to the tumor and activated within the tumor so that we have very targeted delivery to tumors. Um, so here's kind of a synopsis. It is bio, biology driven, as mentioned. It is natural camouflage that is a, a contributory factor uh, within the body. And then we have the microenvironment triggered release. Uh, and here's sort of an illustration of how that works. The LDL receptor uptakes that L pseudo LDL uh, particle. Uh, it ingests it into the tumor. Uh, the tumor is growing rapidly, so it has a uh, huge appetite for LDL-like particles to enable its continued growth. Uh, and then, again, the um, materials are released within the tumor by activation of that microenvironment within the tumor. So it's LDL-mimicking nanoparticles. Um, 
these tiny particles resemble, resemble natural cholesterol in enabling that stealth delivery. Uh, it's built-in precision. Um, the, the disguising of, the, of these um, LDL particles, uh, all of that is attracted into the tumor cells. Uh, again, it's cancer selective uptake and triggered release. So here's sort of the sequence in which the, our, our delivery system, our encapsulated uh, uh, camouflaged stealth particles, we have the LDL binding at the tumor surface, we have internalization, we have the nanoparticle breakdown by, facilitated by the microenvironment of the tumor, and then we have the targeted chemotherapy release. So, um, to, 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 yes. So, um, in terms of exactly uh, where we're at, um, key takeaways from our the the work that's completed to date is that we have demonstrated initial eff efficacy and safety. Um, we have critical data, uh, refining study protocols. Um, we uh, would like to move forward um, into, we have one final preclinical study to complete, a uh, repeat dose uh, rat study, um, and we have submitted a pre-IND package with a favorable outcome from the FDA. So the next steps, uh, like I've mentioned, is the uh, completion of the toxicology study um, in rats and then the submission of a, a true, a, a complete IND um, to the FDA for permission to move forward into human clinical trials. So in terms of the market size, um, uh, I'm, I'm Everyone knows that the uh, market size for anti-cancer or for cancer uh, chemotherapy is quite large. Um, the more recent numbers are that it, it's rapidly increasing in younger and younger populations. Uh, and, um, and so there's truly a, a 19, almost $20 billion uh, expected market size by 2034. Uh, the competitive landscape is illustrated here, um, where cloaked is, is centered uh, the amongst uh, the currently uh, the convenient products. Uh, cloak exceeds that. We believe it, it is easily diluted into IV fluids for delivery. Um, the Braxane and Celgene uh, tend to be quite expensive, well above standard Taxol. Um, we hope to make it more economical by virtue of ease uh, production. And then finally, um, the other corner. So. so the competitive analysis in terms of um, technology, it is a proprietary um, LDL-based uh, targeted delivery. Uh, we have an entire uh, patent platform that surrounds our technology. Um, we have found it to be effective in the numerous animal studies that have been uh, conducted thus far uh, to be equal or superior. Um, it's designed for improved tolerability uh, and safety, which we have observed in our preclinical program and then potentially more cost-effective uh, production as mentioned and ease of use. So our market entry approach, our sales and marketing strategy and our customer acquisition channels are, are provided here uh, in listing. Um, the, we, we hope to license the tumor technology um, for commercialization. Uh, it, we are targeting companies with strong oncology pipelines and a knowledge uh, and, and customer base for uh, such products and hoping to license the deals with uh, Milestone and potentially uh, payments and royalties. 
strategic partnerships also potentially available. Um, you know, in terms of the sales strategy, uh, we, we have certainly listed our approaches here and in sales and marketing, our business development outreach, scientific conferences, uh, et cetera, and then investor, you know, and stakeholder engagement, secure funding uh, through biotech venture, capital firms and strategic investors, or collaborate with uh, and collaborate with key opinion leaders, uh, hopefully to drive awareness and adoption of this approach. So our growth roadmap is really year one, uh, uh, you know, continue to build our um, strong foundation in early stage validation, uh, complete the last preclinical trial uh, and secure continued funding so that we can go into clinical trial material production uh, and, and activities uh, year two, um, actually move into phase one clinical trials, uh, expand the IP portfolio, because we do believe the platform can offer uh, novel, additional oncology product um, activities. Right. Delivery. Yeah. And year three, move into late stage clinical trials in market entry preparation, uh, advance the lead candidate, which is Taxol, into phase two, uh, strengthen our uh, strategy and, and regulatory compliance, um, and obviously establish industry partnerships for distribution and scaling uh, if it, when it comes to that. Um, here's our team of uh, the individuals that uh, comprise um, the cloaked therapeutic um, development team, James McChesney, CSO and founder. Uh, uh, he uh, well known in the taxol industry. He established the National Cancer for Natural, na sorry, excuse me, National Center for Natural Products Research at Old Miss. Um, Steve Bannister has worked in pharma for more than 30 years in physical and analytical chemistry for drug delivery systems. Uh, specializing in design, development, characterization of drug delivery technologies. Uh, myself, uh, I have been in the industry for um, since, for uh, over 32 years. Uh, I have uh, experienced every phase of development from preclinical, so from um, preformulation to preclinical to clinical to regulatory. Uh, to development, uh, worked uh, in pharmaceutical companies for 20 years before uh, uh, per participating in this activity, as well as a rapid analysis laboratory. So finally, um, the ask at this point is truly to assist in the funding of completion of the, uh, the four-week repeat dose rat study. Uh, as well as support the pre uh, the clinical trial material activity, which entails um, transfer to a, a small CMO a contract manufacturing organization that can assist in the de the um, development of adequate product uh, for uh, clinical support of dosing. Um, the the four week rat study uh, will cost anywhere from uh, six hundred fifty thousand to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and we expect that the uh, clinical trial production cycle is going to be about one point five million to two million, followed by clinical support. Uh, clinical trials typically run between two point five to five million dollars, depending on the number of participants. Uh, being served. So, all right, Anna, I'm ready to take any questions that might occur. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Yes, we do have some questions for you. Uh, let's start with Annabelle is asking, what solutions are out there right now that you're trying to replace? The solution that we're creating is one where the chemo care therapeutic regime is tolerable, which means that number one, I have an echo. We do not hear it on our side. 
Okay, so it means that that individuals um, receiving chemotherapy, number one, complete their course of therapy. Number two, we hope that they'll be able to live a normal, uninterrupted, un, you know, un, a life that is, they don't have fatigue, they don't have hair loss, they don't have neuropathy. Um, and by virtue of reducing the toxicity profile, it also means that we might be able to increase the efficacious dose and be more effective. Perfect. Thank you for that. And what are you exactly, what stage are you in in R&D as we speak? Where are you? We have completed the optimization of the pseudo LDL particle in terms of uh, the formulation itself. We have completed numerous um, studies regarding uh, efficacy and comparative testing. And so right now the FDA is only requiring a the repeat dose rat study to be able to move forward into human clinical trials. And Margaret wants to know about the name Cloaked. How does that fit in the model? Cloaked was uh, selected um, because we feel like th this is a uh, encapsulated, camouflaged delivery system. So the body uh, assists in the delivery of the product to the tumor cell. The, the body doesn't see it as a foreign material. And so it does tend to circulate in the system until the tumor digests it. Uh, and, and thus we are we don't have that systemic toxicity that you're observing. So that's the nature of the cloaked. And Eric wants you to talk a little bit about your team and experience, specifically any prior exits. Um, we, <clears throat> okay. so the team itself, um, we've been working on this product for about the last 10 years. Um, my, uh, the James McChesney, it has worked in the um, Texel area for um, decades, um, and we have not we've not had a small business in which we have exited uh, at this point. And tell us exactly what you're looking for. Do you need cash or a strategic partner with cash to bring the product to market? We, I think, um, either case. Um, the cash would be beneficial such that we could drive the project into the clinic and or uh, strategically um, a partner that can assist in the post um, once the product demonstrates that we can, that the clinical trials are successful, that that would be wonderful to partner uh, strategically with someone who has that infrastructure for oncology products. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. If you have any closing remarks for our viewers, please. Um, no, it's just that we truly um, are very interested in patient care, patient ability to complete their course of, of therapy while still feeling well and not so fatigued by classical chemotherapy um, regimes. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Important work you're doing. Thank you for coming on the conference, and we hope to see you again real soon. All right, everyone. We'll be right back.